Uh, yeah, I like this story already. You do? Mm hmm. Paul just likes seeing angry black people, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm hmm. Facebook bans white nationalism and white separatism. That's right. After a civil rights backlash, Facebook will now treat white nationalism and separatism the same as white supremacy and will direct users who try to post that content to a nonprofit that helps people leave hate well, groups. Well, guys, it's, it's been real nice doing this show with you guys. I won't say that now. I mean, but are we done? Uh, Facebook's about to well, ban us. Well, maybe we can get TJ to clean up his fucking... As we're clearly an alt-right, po- an obscure alt-right podcast. Uh, in a major policy shift for the world's biggest social media network, Facebook banned white nationalism and white separatism on its platform Tuesday. Get it out of here. Facebook will also begin directing users who try to post content associated with those ideologies to a nonprofit that helps people leave hate groups, motherboard. I'm learned. sure that is going to yeah, that's problem solved. a lot of these people. Racism over. Yep. Racism has been solved by Mark Zuckerberg yet again. Thank you, Mark. Uh, a, a total PR fucking move. And it's like, look, <coughs> they banned Alex Jones off all these platforms because he's he, evil incarnate. And he says all these horrible things and he lies and he's the worst person in the world. He's a demon. He's a monster. He's still, he's still out there and people still cover him. I don't understand these kinds of silencing moves on these big platforms. It's just fundamentally different from how I think, I guess. I try not to get too salty about it because I, I understand these people are trying to craft some kind of, you know... A vision of their company that they're putting out. They're, they're no different from a car company that wants their car to be thought about in a certain way. And so they're making these moves and banning this content that's objectionable and trying to round off the rough edges on their, on their property or whatever. Sure. And I can't blame them for that. Um, I just don't, I, I would never like, I think it's better to have these, to give like a robust opportunity for people using these platforms to block people so they don't have to see what they have to say and leave it leave it to that like put the power of what you see in your feed in the hands of the people makes the most sense to me and that's really what i advocate for is a platform like that that doesn't really account for what a person is saying beyond just like obviously breaking the law if you're openly flaunting (coughs) breaking the law child porn I will murder people, call oh, this well, yeah. number services. But I'm just yeah. talking about like this type of political, like even if it's far right I- political ideological. ideology. Yeah, ideology. You know, this, this fucking um, uh, like uh, Jean, uh, J.F. Garapé kind of white nationalist Ethnostate, separatist shit. White nationalist, I don't engage with those people personally because I think it's just a cir- circular argument that goes nowhere. And But that doesn't mean that I think that J.F.'s channel ought to be scalped out from under him. I would never advocate for that. I think he should stay right where he is. Because I like people like that in the sunlight where I can see them. It makes sense not to censor the speech of these groups so you can know what's coming at you. It's way easier to craft a narrative that counteracts their stupid separatist white centric narrative if you know what the tenets of that narrative are. You can find these people and hear what they have to say about these issues. You can counter them better with your own better ideas. (coughs) So censoring things is, is... I, it just doesn't make sense to me in this capacity. I mean, obviously, I, look, this is coming soon to YouTube, we, and we have to look, look. The reality is, it's already that, on YouTube to a certain I mean, extent. But it's, I mean, now that's been codified here. I mean, look, look, they're really the biggest challenger to YouTube right now with video is Facebook. Mm-hmm. So I mean, clearly, this is going to come soon to YouTube. And it, look, I can understand, like you said, you can understand the reasons why someone would do it and why they would want to do it. I just don't think that this is the solution to the problem. And I think when they see this literally happen like this, the people who have been indoctrinated are going to see this clearly as an attempt to subvert them. Which Not it, only that, which it, which I, it feel like, is. I feel like when you push them. these people off of these mainstream platforms, they just end up on alternate platforms it, it, where, it they're elevates even, where they're less likely to be challenged right. and their views are more likely to be in an echo chamber of similar thought. Well, it's like people promoted sites like was it minds.com and shit and gab and all these other right. other, and it's like then you went to those sites you're like okay this is like a free speech one and it's all like neo Nazis and it's like dog shit it's because like, those are the people being censored off these other platforms so of course they all congregate well, on the free speech when, platform. If you point at a thinker they echo chambers. or a, if you point at a thinker or a speaker or a pundit or a philosopher or whatever and say he's not allowed to say what he's saying all it does is draw attention to that person. Oh, like yeah. there's it's a certain the stri- element the of humanity that sure. it just piques their interest because I want to hear the unhearable. I want to hear the blasphemy that's too blasphemous to be spoken. It draws people to them. It draws people oh, dude, to their ideology. You ain't fucking kidding. The stronger that people try to suppress this and fight this and, clo- <clears throat> and cloister it off, 
the stronger it's become. Right. It's kind of like it's, it's kind of like stronger the, in the last two, couple of years. It's kind of like the Streisand effect, right? Yeah, yeah. that's what it's, it's like. Called. The harder you try to censor something, the more impetus there is for people and to push more, it yeah, out. And the more people are fascinated by it. Yeah. Um, European Parliament has voted in favor of Article 13. <sighs> Critics argue that 13 and related legislation passed today by MEPS uh, risked infringing on copyright, on, on infringing on freedom of speech. And uh, have you guys heard about the uploader part of this, where it's like there's, there's like, like an upload filter just prevents you from even uploading something potentially? <laughs> Doesn't it also like? Isn't it able to intercede in what streams you're able to see? Yeah, uh, from foreign so, yes. countries. Well, well, one of the main things that it does is um, in these countries. Like right now, if a YouTube channel posts copyrighted content on the channel, the person who owns the channel is culpable for it. Uh, under Article 13, YouTube would be culpable for it. Or whatever. So this site. is just going to be a huge copyright lockdown right. on YouTube then? Um, at least there's people have talked about the possibility of these platforms actually withdrawing from, from the, these countries. From the EU, basically. From the EU entirely. Which would make YouTube unavailable in the EU? Yes, and and you know it's without probably, a VPN, obviously. Right, obviously, a bunch of people are gonna get <coughs> people VPNs go on and tour and VPN and other shit. But right. uh, it's not really the really scary thing in terms of how YouTube and other sites that we you might frequent uh, handle this is, you know, uh, are they just gonna crack down on copyright across the board because it's easier than dealing with this? Are they going to just withdraw from this region and say fuck you then? Uh, and, you know, it's not really known yet how these uh, corporations that host content are going to deal with uh, Article 13. Well, Google which and, and YouTube. becomes active, I think, in 2021. Well, Google and YouTube were actively lobbying against this. Yes. I mean, a lot, all the tech companies really were. And, like, well, of course, because some, it, it's, some of the it's votes, trying to hold them yeah. liable for what their users And some do. of the votes were close, but, I mean, ultimately, this is just shocking. I mean, this is like kind of like us losing. <laughs> um, what is that called? Uh, they just repealed it. Uh, net neutrality. It right. kind of feels like that for us almost. I mean, but this is worse actually. This is way worse. This is this is like actively butt fucking you, <laughs> kind of thing. I, just, I mean, it's just astonishing when they pass laws like this. Uh, European politicians have voted to pass Article 13 and Article 11 as part of a sweeping uh, sweeping changes regulating regulating online copyright. The European Parliament passed the legislation by 348 votes to 274 so not votes. Even close. Not even really a close vote. Um, opponents had hoped for a last-minute amendments to be made to the legislation, but failed to garner enough votes. Julia Rita, a German MEP representing the Pirate Party, who opposes <laughs> Pirate Party, the copyright directive, said it was a dark day for internet freedom. Uh, Margrethe Vestager, European Commissioner for uh, Competition, said the result was great news. <laughs> no, not wow. at all. A vote on debating amendments, including an amendment to remove Article 13 and Article 11 link tax from the broader copyright legislation, was rejected by just five votes. EU member states uh, now have two years to pass their own laws that put the copyright directive into effect. Uh, so this is coming. And uh, in a statement, YouTube said the final version of the directive was an improvement, but it remained concerned that Article 13 could have unintended consequences that may harm Europe's creative and digital economy. Wow. Uh, so well, this is we're not really sure yet what exactly this is going to do. It's going to depend on how a lot of these companies react to it. Um, it doesn't but, sound good. It's uh, yeah, nothing about it sounds all that great. It's, it doesn't sound like something that they would pass through without an imp without like the desire to use it against these companies. And I think when they do oh, yeah. that, these companies are going to make the logical decision to just withdraw. Look, these companies have been trying to. I mean, all of these companies that ha hold these intellectual properties have been pushing for versions of this kind of legislation all across the globe. Um, this is just their first really big, stunning Win. victory. Yeah. Um, I mean, all of Europe is pretty fucking stunning. Yeah. Well, the EU, anyway. EU, yeah. Uh, of course, <clears throat> uh, makes me think that Brexit maybe was a good idea at this point, uh, despite how disastrously, disastrously yeah. it's well, rolling it out. Well, isn't Brexit... I mean, I, I don't know if you pulled anything about it, so <coughs> I don't want to talk out of turn, but while it's on the table, isn't Brexit in danger oh, of just not happening it's a total disaster like Theresa may has said I, I read she said she's gonna, she's gonna step down she wants she's but she wants to deliver brexit first right but popular support <laughs> for brexit has eroded to the point where nobody really wants it anymore yeah 
Uh, the whole Brexit thing is fucked, but, uh, you know, <laughs> something like this makes me think it, maybe it was a good idea to just, you know, however difficult it is to sever that fucking cord. Well, it's it's seeming like that, I mean, uh, who knows if ultimately it'll happen. Or but maybe the UK will just turn around and do something just might, as bad as this. Well, so they, might, they might just leave the EU with no deal, and then it'll just be like, who even knows what's going to happen with that? I mean, this is a, a lot of uncertainty. This is a slightly scary idea for us, too, because there's a really good chance that Britain or that, yeah, Great Britain ends up back in the EU and that this, you know, legislation leads to a mass blocking of YouTube and similar sites in the EU. Yeah. We've got a large chunk of people that watch us. I mean, I talk to them in our fan community. Uh, that's why I was... I talk to Brits all the goddamn time in our fan community. Yeah, I, I'm going to... I think uh, a lot of what we're going to have to be Germans. doing for the next two years is strongly pushing uh, those users towards VPNs until we have a better idea. Yeah, about maybe what we maybe we people... try and find a VPN to partner with. Yeah. You know what I mean? I actually was thinking about it earlier today because there a lot of people who maybe you're not using them right now are probably going to have to start. I mean, if, yeah. If you're not ever using a VPN for anything, you probably, yeah, you definitely need to look into getting some kind of simple But VPN. at this point, you have an even stronger impetus to do so. Oh, yeah. If you're in the EU, <coughs> I'd look into it immediately. Yes, uh, absolutely. And this, of course, this is uh, two years before this really starts taking effect, but uh, it's coming, and uh, we don't really, I don't really, I can't pretend to know what it's going to do yet, but I it mean, doesn't the, sound like it's going to be great. There are measures these regions can take, too, to fucking inhibit VPN traffic, so that That's might true. not. So we'll see.